The African child being deliberately deprived of his true language, culture, and identity will constitu con constitute tomorrow a completely lost Africa. Indigenous African languages and cultures have been left out of a lot of literature, media, and, and ed educational material. Think of the best self-help book you've ever read and the impact it had on your life. Imagine you could not read it because you do not understand the language or you had a low proficiency in the language. This is unfortunately true for majority of South Africans. Let's take it to the classroom. Research shows that students learn better when um, they are being taught in their mother tongue. This is unfortunately true for only 25% of our, of our country, as can be seen from the pie chart where English and Afrikaans constitutes less than 25% of the country, while an overwhelming 75% of South Africans receive impaired education due to language being a barrier. This can obviously affect competency, and our government understands this, hence they implemented mother tongue education for grades one, two, and three. The results were so impactful that they wanted to implement it for grades four to six, but have not been able to do so because the texts don't exist in indigenous um, African languages. Nelson Mandela once said, if you speak to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. But if you speak to, ma to a man in his language, it goes to his heart. So what do we do? Taka is a language service provider that aims to translate educational literature, general literature, as well as corporate literature into indigenous African languages. We'll be doing this by a database of translators that will be able to translate work from language A to language B. Now, understanding that the African identity is not only wrapped up in our languages, but in the way of life, DACA also aims to capture African languages for two main purposes. Firstly, to promote it via social media in the form of videos, blog posts, etc. And secondly, to create a database of indigenous African knowledge for young African youth and other people, perhaps, to always be able to refer back to. So what is our business model? DACA aims to charge publishers, authors, the government, and any other potential um, customers for the service of translating. The cost of translating per word is about one rand 31 cents when you pay translators and project managers, et cetera. We, we aim to add a 30% mock-up to this and charge about one rand 72 cents per word. Uh, and then lastly, what is our roadmap from this point onwards? So step one is that DACA aims to launch our social media pages and begin the work in terms of research and posting it on those social media pages to create some traction and vibe around our name. Secondly, we want, <laughs> Secondly, we want to est establish a database of translators who at first they'll be working on a freelance basis for us, and once we have more consistent work, we can perhaps think of hiring on a permanent basis. Thirdly, we want to develop our MVP, and this will consist of shorter texts such as articles and blog posts, et cetera, and with this we're able to build a bit of legitimacy behind our name. We'll also be posting this on our social media pages. And then lastly, we want to go for the bigger fish and translate textbooks, et cetera. DACA is not just a company, DACA is a movement. Thank you. The input of uh, the Department of Education, the school curriculum, how do you guys see your business fitting into that, especially at primary and, and secondary levels in schools? Um, okay, so just short introduction. Hi, my name is Apendulu Ngola. I'm part of the team, so I'll just be here for the Q&A. Um, so now when you're looking at the government level and how then we fit into that, so our main goal, um, as, we, as we said before, is that since the government actually al al already wants to actually push towards that in terms of translating and everything, we want it to be that source and we want to be in source by the government to actually play that part of actually translating all these texts. Because all the textbooks in the curriculum already exist, but they already exist in um, English and so forth. So now what our plan is going into these levels is we want to actually translate all those texts into, um, uh, into African indigenous languages in which they can be taught in. I think just maybe touching onto that question as well. So one of the other target audiences that you said was publishers and, and other form businesses. Have you been able to establish why they would want to translate? So the, the, the need is there, the social need is there, but the need to do that from a business perspective, what were some of those? Um, as highlighted um, with our statistics, what this will do for the, translate, the, the publishers and authors, it, is a, it will give them a wider market that they were not previously able to reach due to language being a barrier. 
Can I just ask you a bit about competitors? So obviously this is an obvious need and we know that it needs to be done and, and you're saying it's not out there and with the, you know, there's a lot of translation happening. Um, as you said, one, one, one rand 31 uh, per word. There's AR, there's a whole, I know that can't always capture culture, et cetera, but what else is out there and what's different about what you're gonna do when, when you get there? Um, okay, so there are a few competitors. I know Borna Magazine is already translating their own work and it's sold in Klossa in the Eastern Cape as well as in Sesotho, um, in areas where there's a lot of Sesotho speaking people. So one of our competitive edges is that we don't only aim to translate into one indigenous language, but we aim to create a database large enough to speak to a much larger variety into all the indigenous languages that South Africa holds. And secondly, as I said earlier, part of our brand appeal is that it's not purely about language but it's also to capture the African culture. And so we think a lot of the work we put out on our social media pages in terms of blog posts, articles, et cetera, and videos will be able to give us greater brand appeal, if you will. Yeah, I'm curious to know what have you done so far to date? Uh, okay, so Tagla is a really, really young company, so I guess exciting things that we've done thus far. Um, we registered a few weeks back, that was pretty exciting. Um, <laughs> And then just secondly, we did begin on our research. We interviewed Yungosu Jezile, um, who's a Kosa chief uh, in the Eastern Cape, about Isigo Lembeleko, which are some of the posts we want to, some of the articles we want to start posting on our social media pages when we launch that. And yeah, we're here now. But now I'm curious, how is this going to work? Are you going to have a page for Kosas, page for Zulus, page for Sutus, or? Um, I mean... It's not just to say that we want one page for Kosas and then only Kosa people can go there. We want to have a very large page where anyone who actually wants to look through this can actually go to. So it's going to be one main page that anyone can have access to so that anyone who actually wants to learn about the cultures, wants, wants, wants to learn about the languages, actually has access to it. Not that you just have to be a Kosa speaking person to actually learn about these things. From a, from a textbook point of view, do you know what the budget would need to be to translate all those all the curriculum into the 11 languages? Um, when we were calculating and doing our financials, um, when factoring the fact that we'll be translating and possibly even creating new words um, when translating into um, indigenous African knowledge, we understand that... Please.